Steve Durano for Ask a Real Expert. I just finished my Saturday morning run. Clicked on my computer and I got an email from George. And George's situation is very similar to everybody's situation in the world. When he was young, he could eat basically anything he wanted. He gets married, and unfortunately he married a great cook and a pastry chef. So over the next probably 10 years, he ends up gaining 60 or 70 pounds. Well, he ends up losing it, whew, but then it ends up coming back. Now, George has got a couple questions, and his frustration is the fact that when he lost the 60 pounds before, he says, you know, basically I could eat a greater variety of stuff, but now when I'm trying that, it's not working. Well, George, when I read your email, you weren't just eating anything you want. You said, I would eat prime rib, but instead of, instead of having dessert, I would have strawberries instead of cheesecake. Well, you were watching what you were eating to a certain extent. Now, let me answer George's questions because his questions have got to be very similar to everybody else's out there. His first question is, is a flat calorie intake slash deficit the key to weight loss? Yes, it is. But think in these terms. We want to create a calorie deficit. And by that, I mean we want to burn up more calories than we're taking in. So you can either burn more calories to create that deficit or you can eat less. And when that happens, like I've told people a million times, you don't come to a screeching halt. What happens is, is your body says, wow, we need some additional calories. Let's begin to take it from here. So again, all your body functions begin uh, to be fueled by the food you eat and the fat you have. That's why you're still able to build muscle on a calorie deficit. But with regards to creating that calorie deficit, it's really not creating a calorie deficit today and yesterday and tomorrow. It's, ca it's creating that calorie deficit day after day, week after week, month after month. It's that accumulation of that calorie deficit consistently for a long period of time. Because I tell people, hey, a thousand calorie deficit is a weight loss. It's just not a pound. So you can't see it in the mirror. You can't you know, see it on the scale. So yes, creating a consistent calorie deficit. Now, if you have too much to eat on Saturday, is that going to kill your diet? No. You create that calorie deficit again on Sunday and then Monday and Tuesday and you work out and so you yo-yo a little bit, but hopefully it trends downward so you have a loss over time. That's why I'm saying don't worry about your day-to-day weight loss, worry about your week to week and more accurately your month to month. So yes, if you want, pick a calorie total, whatever that is, and eat that on a consistent basis. Again, calories are like money. If you don't know how much you're taking in, you don't know how much you can spend. Same thing with calories. If you don't know how much you're eating, you're going, gee, am I eating too much? Am I eating too little? Should I be doing more cardio? You don't know. Pick a calorie total and then work with that. And then based on that calorie total and your exercise and activity levels, you'll determine whether weight loss is occurring. But again, if you have a bad day, don't worry about it. Just go back onto your, your schedule and uh, continue it. Again, nothing's going to be perfect. Second question is, are all calories created equal? No, they're not. But when it comes to weight gain or weight loss, they are. I made this video, um, you know, if you had a Snickers for breakfast and a Snickers for lunch and then a healthy dinner, you'd still lose weight. And everybody hit the roof. Let me tell you something. You would. If you ate nothing but cheesecake, but you ate 1,500 calories of cheesecake, but you burned up 2,000 calories a day, that's a 500 calorie deficit, you would lose weight. Would it be healthy? No. Would your body receive all the nutrients it needed? No. But you'd still lose weight because by taking away calories, your body is then forced to utilize the fat calories it has stored. Still, the best way to lose weight is creating a calorie deficit, eating the foods you like. That's the way it works because in George's email, he writes, man, we had these diets where we had to eat fish heads on, you know, bark crackers. And I'm like, yeah, that's what it is because people tell you what to eat. Eat this and you'll lose weight. No, no, no. Eat less and you'll lose weight. So eat less of the foods you like. So that's the point. You create a style of eating um, and a menu of foods that you like. By eating less of them, you will lose weight. If you're an athlete, you do need a certain amount of proteins and carbohydrates, less fats, 
but you do need a certain amount of proteins and carbohydrates to fuel your workouts and fuel your recovery and that's what people don't realize so when people talk about all calories are being created equal with regards to weight loss yes you take anything out of your diet any calories out of your diet and you will lose weight but take all the carbohydrate diet calories out of your diet you'll lose weight you'll also lose water weight and you'll lose a certain amount of muscle mass again because carbohydrates are utilized to fuel the body without carbohydrates your body then catabolizes the protein you eat and the protein you have is muscle so again it will cause a weight loss by eating less of everything so again a cheesecake diet would not be the greatest but you would lose body fat you'd also lose muscle too so the point is is that I tell people all diets work pick the diet that you like best and stick with it because if you like it and you like those foods you're golden but make sure your diet is well-rounded a well-balanced diet that's what works and if you really want to think in terms of how do I cut the most calories from my diet think in terms of a lower fat diet and forget that crap about essential fats okay because we get enough essential fats in our normal daily foods you don't have to supplement with fats which is the dumbest thing I've always heard oh well I'm eating uh, handfuls of peanuts they're essential fats really every handfuls 500 calories okay so just cut down on the fats that you uh, are taking in eat a well-balanced diet lean meats fish chicken beef once in a while again whole grain breads whole grain wheats things like that count your total calories uh, third question is with regards to weightlifting high intensity weightlifting how much time do I need to wait between you know workouts I train chest on Monday how much time do I have to wait and I think George mentioned he was doing um, three sets of a couple exercises well that's great eventually George you're gonna have to up the intensity of your workout because pretty soon that's not gonna be that intense so once that exercise becomes not that intense you don't have to wait that long so the more intensely you train a muscle the more damage occurs the more micro trauma occurs the more rest you're gonna need until you get to the point where you can train a muscle so hard it's gonna need three or four or five days of rest in between I train body parts only once a week but when I do chest I do four exercises and that means four exercises with four to five working sets meaning those are hard sets not warm-ups so again you have to think in terms of how hard you're working and at the end are you sore and you say well gee and I'm really not that sore uh, I don't feel that you know sore well you know what maybe your workout isn't that intense anymore for your conditioning so now you don't need as much rest so again the amount of rest somebody's gonna need is gonna be based on what kind of shape they're in and how intensely they train so the, the question is is are you sore when you go to do chest again or legs again oh, no I'm not really that sore how's your strength well my strength is, is just not that good it hasn't been good okay well you might not be sore but you still probably need an extra day or two to recover because your strength is diminishing if your soreness isn't there and your strength is going up either you have plenty of rest or you're not really training hard enough because the harder you train the more rest you need and the last question is I'm taking a daily dose of branch chain amino acids and drinking a protein drink what do you think about that well George that might be one of the reasons why you're not losing weight because guys are always sucking down extra protein from protein shakes we get enough protein in our daily calorie intake to build all the muscle we need what guys don't seem to understand is in if you were gonna supplement with anything if you weren't trying to lose weight it would be complex carbohydrates by taking in more carbohydrates you fuel your body and you leave your protein available to build muscle and again the amount of protein that we need to build muscle is not that great an average diet supplies two to three times that so with regards to your weight loss get rid of the protein shake don't worry about it I don't take them they're not needed when I come home from an intense workout the first thing I take is a glass of Gatorade I want to replace the glycogen that I use during my workout and unless somebody's training intensely they don't need that but if you're training intensely that's the first thing you want to start doing replacing the glycogen so your workout tomorrow and the following day and the next week you're not trying to recover from it so you feel sluggish and icky with regards to branch chain amino acids this has got to be one of the biggest gimmicks out there branch chain amino acids they're amino acids but you know what you don't need them why is that Steve because if you eat protein protein is made up of branch chain amino acids and if you eat protein in the forms of 
fish, chicken, or beef. Wait a minute, fish, chicken, or beef? You're actually eating muscle. You're eating a muscle, and a muscle has all the amino acids you already need because a muscle is a complete protein. So the muscle you're trying to build is no different than the muscle you're eating. So if you're eating fish, chicken, or beef, or eggs, you are eating all the branch chain amino acids you need. So save your money. Go out to dinner and have a nice dinner on that money. Stop wasting your time. And finally, guys are always worried about the best supplements to take to get big and huge. And you know what? The best supplement is still weights. All right, George? Train safe, train hard. Talk to you later.